Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. If you had been following my channel, you would have noticed that all the Spring Boot videos start with Spring Initializer and I use the website start.spring.io for it. However, recently I got to know that this feature is now available inside IntelliJ and you don't even have to come to start.spring.io in order to create a new Spring Boot project. Let me open IntelliJ. So here I'm going to create a new project. So once I click on the new project option, I see an option called Spring Assistant. So the version of IntelliJ which I'm using is the community edition. Let me check the version number so that you guys can use it. So I use the 2018.1.4 community edition which was built on May 17, 2018. I'm pretty sure there might be a latest version of IntelliJ available right now but I, I didn't upgrade it yet however you can also check if you have the spring assistant present in order to check if you are able to access this particular initializer from the IntelliJ itself so what the spring assistant does is it helps us in creating spring boot application and spring cloud data flow application from the IntelliJ IDE itself so I don't have to go to start.spring.io instead IntelliJ has the ability to pull in the features of start.spring.io and integrate it with the IDE itself. So here we have a different option. We have a default option which is the start.spring.io and the Spring Cloud Data Flow which is the start-scescfapps.io. So these are two different initializers. I'm going to use the Spring Initializer because I want to create a Spring Boot application. So let's try doing that. So when I click on the next option, I can see the group ID artifact. So this is similar to the UI which is here, right? So we have the group ID artifact, um, dependencies, version of um, Spring Boot, what type of product it is, Java or Kotlin or Groovy, right? So I'm going to give a example, com tech primers. I'm just going to say demo initializer. I'm just going to create a dummy project basically. And I want it to be Maven. I don't want Gradle. I just say Maven. And the language I say, let's say Java, and I'll use Java 8. The project name will be Demo Initializer. Demo for Spring Boot using, Intelli using IntelliJ Spring Boot Initializer. And the package name which I wanted is comtechprimers.demo, let's say. Right? So these are different details which will be entered in the POM XML. I'll just say next. Now this is where the dependencies needs to be selected. So similar to how we had a drop down here to select all the different dependencies for example web or h2 or mongodb whatever right. So all these are present inside the web view here and in IntelliJ now you have a specific set of option in which you can search. So for example I can search mongo here and I will be able to see the different mongodb options. However these are all grouped as well. So if I go to core, I can see the core components of the Spring Boot application. Web, if I go, I can see the different Spring Web components which are supported. You select this particular option, it shows what is this. Same way with Spring Cloud, the NoSQL integration, Spring integration, and also the cloud integration with Google and Azure. In fact, by default, it provides Pivotal Cloud Foundry because it is created by the same company. So let's, for example, select dev options like dev tools i wanted dev tools and i'm going to create a spring mvc application so that's it and also i wanted a database i'll use h2 i'll just say these right so whatever dependencies you have selected here these will be showing up here so these are different dependencies which will be added to your pom xml once the project has been created and here you can select the spring boot version i'm going to use the 2.0.5 version if you're using 1.5 version of spring boot you can definitely go ahead and create that now click on the next option and finally the project is going to create under the downloads or for example for me it's under downloads you can create your own workspace and it will be creating the project there so this is quite simple compared to the tedious process of downloading this project unzipping it and then opening it in intellij i just recently got to know that i can use the spring initializer of the intellij in order to create projects out of the box so i don't even have to now 
create it from the start.spring.io, download it, unzip it, and open it in IntelliJ. So see that whatever project we created, it's getting opened. Let me maximize this window. It's taking a while to load. So see the project structure. We had created a demo initializer, and you have the exact project structure of a Spring Boot application. Let's open the POM XML to see if the different different dependencies has been added. See that this is using Spring Boot 2.0.5. Also, it has added Spring MVC, the Dev tools, and the H2 in the dependencies. And by default, Spring Boot test dependency is added as well. So it works out of the box and the good part is it is inside IntelliJ itself. If you are using IntelliJ, you can definitely use it. I've, I'm not sure if this feature is available in Eclipse. I think it should be available in Eclipse as well. You can go ahead and use this particular option because it is pretty productive compared to using start.spring.io and downloading the project and then opening it. Instead, you can just use the create new project and then go to the Spring Assistant and then get your Spring Boot applications created out of the box. I hope you guys enjoyed learning something new from this particular video. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.